today I go over the modifiers. I go over all of these here. That's why this video is a little bit longer than normal. I don't go over the mask, the multi-resolution, the skin, and that's pretty much it. I go over all the rest of these because the ones I mentioned I really don't know what they do. I really haven't used them or really experimented or bothered to actually learn those yet. I'll learn them eventually, I'm sure. But I also show the uh, displays at the end for a little bit of fun. It's kind of just showing what it does. It can be useful. It's kind of cool. Anyway, if you want to stay tuned and stay to the end and see that, you can see that. But otherwise, the rest of the video like well, 30 minutes, 35 minutes of it, just showing all of these modifiers here. Alright, stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Kevin with Inventomar, and today I'm going to be going over the modifiers, the main ones here, the generate ones. These ones probably won't use for 3D printing at all, really. Some of these you might. Some of these are actually kind of cool, like this place. That one's actually really awesome. I might show you that one at the end, just for a little bonus. And these are mostly for animation. The fluid simulation, I'll probably show that for some other bonus footage on something. But anyway, so what you want to do is just create a basic object. I got the cube there, but I'll go ahead and just do an icosphere. I'll just make it more round. And add the modifier array. What this does is it adds an exact copy of an object and puts it into an array and you can change the offset of how far apart they are. And this is the count of the objects. You can make more than one. And basically adds a whole bunch of them there. And the cool thing about the arrays, you can add it multiple times. So you got two arrays here. You can see the offset, set that to zero, and then go the opposite offset. And it creates an exact copy of the first array that you made. And you can extend that out and just make a full 2D array with that. But I'll just try to keep it simple with the one array for now. So once you do make the array, you can actually do something kind of cool with it. It's, you can like just make another object, and let's make a couple of different objects. Just kind of randomly place them, and go back to this start cap. See, I added the cone, and it selects objects that you have in the scene already. And it just kind of adds whatever objects you have to it. So if you're creating like an object that is like a column or something, you can add a special thing on top or on bottom. So it doesn't have to be long that axis. It could be on the Z. And you can put it whatever way you want. And the constant offset kind of shifts it a little bit. So you can do that with this too, but I'm not really sure what the difference between the relative and the constant are. Let's just experiment with it a little bit here. If we go one Y, one Y. I think the constant means that it goes constantly one as compared to the relative which goes to the previous object. It goes one object distance, not really one, but let's try that again.
Yeah, the constant just makes it so... I don't know, it's kind of confusing. But, <laughs> but you can make it add a curve to it. That a... I don't know how to pronounce it. Bezier? Bezier? Curve? And make it two. Let's see the curve. There's no count anymore. So if you go into the curve here, focus in on it. Extract it. See as I extract there, it adds more to it. And it doesn't matter where they're positioned, it just adds that many. Making you can drag it and just adds more. That's kind of what the curve modifier does. And fixed count, that's what we're working with. Fixed length, get the curve. Just all the end caps on there. But the fixed length, you can have the certain space in between of them or in between them and no matter what you change the length it will always cut off at that specific length. See this one's 17 and does it do negative 2? Yeah it does both sides. Whoa, what happened here? Blender just died on me. Awesome. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. That was really weird. I guess it's telling me that that's enough of the array because that's pretty much all there really is to it. There's not a whole lot <clears throat> to the thing. That's the first time Blender's crashed without a warning or anything on me for a while. It's been pretty good. The merge option. Created a ton of them. <laughs> Don't look quite that many. Not sure what that is, but if you want, you can look that up and research that a little bit. Something I really don't use. I just use the main array of features. I use this for like when I'm making uh, lighting and stuff like that. I like to have uh, array of type lightings because when you're looking at uh, models and stuff like really good pictures of a car or something you see the reflection on it you see lights that are kind of like that a lot of the time it's usually the upper uh, like fluorescent tube type lights are the most common that they use for those kind of shoots and things like that but that would be the basically kind of what it would be you can the object doesn't have to be that specific object you can make whatever you want like if I wanted to make this all goofy shaped and add an array to it it'd do that same object it copies the exact object doesn't matter what it is okay, let's go on to the uh, next modifier here which is the bevel tool this is the same one as the W or if you go in the edit mode and hit bevel after you hit W. Well, that's kind of a cool effect. Double bevel. But this one does it on the whole object. And it works great for symmetrical, simple things like that. But when it becomes more complex, it gets kind of overwhelming for it. And it doesn't really work that well. But just to make a simple cube like that, it, it works well. It's kind of like making the uh, meta ball, not the meatball, the meta ball. <laughs> but it's very similar, but it's actually a lot cleaner looking. And basically you have the width of the bezel on there, number of segments, profile, you have the 
move in or out, you can actually make the like crown molding type materials. Have it invert a little bit. And that just goes on whatever material layer. That's uh it deals with materials and modeling and the like rendering type things. And this does only the corners. So if you wanna just do the corners on something. Can zoom it in and make it nice rounded like that. Change the profile to go out. It makes little bumps. Looks up kind of weird though. I don't want the profile that high. Guess the only vertices would be best with the inverted one, but clamp overlap. That's when you have like more complex objects. It works better with that. And you can change the limit method here. So only see if I can get it to do it. I'll go ahead and edit mode. And Change the object a little bit. So check that. So if something's over a certain angle, it won't go on there. See how it's still on the end one there because it's more of an angle than that. And it goes away. That's what the angle does. And this has to do with weight painting. This is another mode in Blender for doing things. It's kind of complicated. Basically, it's one way to texture paint and there's all kinds of stuff you can do with weight for gravity and all kinds of it it's kind of complex and confusing but it's pretty cool too though and so I don't know if that worked on it whoa that was kind of <laughs> That selected the uh, vertex group from the weight painting that I did, I think. Let me check something. Yeah, it looks like it did. So it created its own group from the weight painting. Which is kind of cool, actually. And with each of these, you have the. You can change it by offset, width. Usually, typically, it's offset. Depth, it gets all. Kind of out of whack. But when you have a little small amount, it's pretty. Just minor details and how it looks and how you want it. You really don't want to have it overlapping like that, though. That causes a non-manifold object. That's bad. It kind of has hard on uh, corners sometimes. Plus, I have a pretty high segment count there. I might not have been too helpful with it.
Right now, I really don't know what these two do. It's not really. Not really. I haven't really ever used those, but I'm sure they do something that's probably cool, but I just don't know about those two. Anyway, that's the uh, bevel tool. And boolean, we've gone over this. I've shown it millions of times, so I'm not going to show that anymore. Build, this one actually is for... Really, it's for animation. It's not really useful for 3D printing at all. If I take a cube and duplicate it, duplicate it, duplicate it like this, and not even join these all together properly, just join them all together and then add a build modifier. What it does is it will play an animation. Okay, maybe not. There we go. But it does it for the start length, length of the whatever you want it to go, but whatever object you have, it kind of does its own thing, builds an animation from it. But that's the uh, build tools. Not really that useful, but it can be if you're doing animations for stuff. And that's that one. Decimate. This one is really helpful for when you have an object that is just completely way out of whack with too many triangles and hexagons and whatever shapes that you had, polygons. It's like a lot of just a ton of loop, loop cuts here. So I really didn't do much to that. I'm going to go ahead and sculpt it real quick. to show you how many crazy polygons it has. So it's not really that many, but it's still quite a bit for the shape that it is. So the decimate tool, this can come in handy if you have objects that are just huge. The first one is collapse. You can just do a ratio and it collapses everything down into smaller segments. It looks a little bit rougher than it was, but you can kind of control that a little bit. Like, that's not too bad. It's about half of what it was. See, right now it has 16,000 faces on it, and this before it has 24,000 to start out with. So it cuts down that quite a bit. That's just the collapse one. <coughs> the unsubdivide I didn't really subdivide this, so I don't know if it's going to work with this or not. Okay, it did, but usually it shows it you as you're going along. What that does is just cuts it down to like a bare minimum. That can come handy too sometimes. Then there's the uh, planar. Not sure exactly how this one works, but this one works pretty cool too. And see, so it kind of cuts them into all weird, funky shapes. It's pretty neat how it does that one, though. But it looks pretty similar in that there's way less shape to this one. 
That was just the, uh, you can set the angle on it to Okay, that one was way too much. <laughs> this is probably going to be too much too. Yeah, this one cut it way down way too much. Still have 105 faces though. But that's just way too much. Usually a smaller number is better. Like it was a, normally it's on 5. And these, I'm not really sure what these do. It's just kind of random what it does. I really never use these, but I've used the collapse and sub subdivide and planar all the time for different things. Just to get something down from a ton of polygons like trees for example when you're making trees they get a ton of them and when you're making a game you want to have as many or as minimal as possible for uh, the graphics card to be able to handle it because not everyone has a super graphics card okay let's see the next one here edge but oh this one the great one that this one works for is text so, so I put the S's and O's in here because that shows the best uh, look on it. I'm going to extrude. Size it up a bit. Center it. And this really isn't practical for 3D printing at all, but what it does is, is cool though. Let's go over it really quick here. Convert that to a mesh. So when you're looking at it, see how it's, if it's flat, you can see all the different lines and everything and it not really smooth, but if you smooth it, then you get all these weird gradients. So if you use the edge split tool, it smooths everything out and keeps the faces all front and clear and everything sharp where it needs to be. And you can change the angle and it crisps it up and makes it look good. So if you're going to... Oh, that's CPU mode. GPU! There we go. Much better. <laughs> Just as an example. Like if you turn this off. It's kind of hard to tell when it's rendered, but... It depends on the lighting of certain things. Over here, I was looking at these mainly. See how the gradient's kind of weird there? That makes it flat. It's a minor detail, but when you're trying to render something, it helps quite a bit. That's pretty much all that really is. And let's go to the next one. Let's try a cylinder this time. Mask. This is one I actually honestly don't know about. I don't think I've ever used this one. So, that's something I'm going to have to research and find out and let you know on. I'm sure it's pretty cool, but I have absolutely no idea what it does. So we'll go ahead and skip over that one. The mirror one I showed you last week, the multi-resolution. This one's kind of... I don't know, 
it's kind of confusing. I never really use it. If I knew more about it, I could tell you more about it, but I really don't. I don't know. No, I don't want to save it. Okay. Anyway, I don't think I really know what that one does either. Skip over that one. Pretty much just kind of cool. I'm going to go ahead and kind of destroy this. See, now we have this object that's all funky and goofy and it's not really solid or anything. This can kind of help with the uh, non-manifold. doesn't really work the greatest, but... Edit mode. Control-Alt-Shift-M finds all the non-manifold items in the... or vertices in the object that aren't connected to anything when they should be. Like that, right there, that's not connected to anything. And that's going to be a problem. When you try to slice it, it's going to get all confused. So you can try to remash. This is somewhat of a fix. It doesn't always work. And the more you use it, the more it creates more faces and tries. Is it is exponential, like we're already up to 100,000. And my computer starts really slowing down around 9 or 10. I mean, it's not doing anything now. Just waiting for it. We're at a half a million almost. And we're at almost 2 million now. So it didn't really do that good at all on this. But that was kind of a really a botch job. <laughs> Apply that. It's going to take a while here. And if we go into here, edit mode, it's going to have. Yeah, look at that. There's a ton of them there. I'm surprised Brenner hasn't crashed on me now. Look at that, that's crazy. But sometimes it helps and it works to remake an object that's kind of gotten all screwed up. And you can see it kind of tried to do it, but it didn't really do that well. But it made more solid. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Because it's just slowing everything down. What's the next one? Oh, the screw modifier. I showed that in my 3D printing episode where the uh, I make the lead screw. And that one actually, I do a pretty good example of that. So if you want to watch that, go ahead and check that video out. And let's try UV swinger. Skin. This one kind of unique. I really don't know a whole lot about this one, but it's pretty cool. It works a lot like the, what was it called? I can't think of the name right now. Like the, like when you make a curve and solidify it, the solidify. It kind of does a lot like that. But this kind of it's more for character modeling and stuff like that. It creates a skin on the outside. It's You have to have a specific shape and all that stuff. I really don't know how to use this one either. But I'll probably learn it later on. It's just something I really have, haven't really wanted to learn a whole lot about yet. And solidify, that's what I was just talking about. So if we take a cylinder 
go into edit mode and delete these faces. Oh, not the vertices. Just delete the faces. Now we're left with just this ring that's just no layers thick. It's just the shell, basically. The solidify tool creates a shell for you and makes the object solid. This is actually a really neat tool. And you can crease it in our outer. <clears throat> Flip the normals. Only RAM. Oh, it only does the edge. It doesn't do the inside part, so it leaves it kind of hollow. That's what that does. And just does the inside part with the fill rim. So. Oh, it's the material index. We can change that. That really doesn't matter for printing at all. Anyway, this is a solidify tool. It's pretty cool. So now we just have a solid object there. And triangulate. Okay, so this one is kind of cool. This is more for video game type stuff. See how they're all four-sided polygons. What are those called? Quads? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> apply that. Oh, you can't apply it in edit bone. Apply it, and then it converts all the quads into triangles. And just basically converts everything. And the wireframe. This one's actually pretty cool. But I don't want to do it when it's in tries. Actually, yeah, I do. But I'm going to change objects. I'm going to make a cube. Go like that. I'm going to loop cut it not that many times. And that would be good. Add modifier, triangulate, apply. So we've got triangles there. Now, if we add the wireframe, we have angled support. Quick and easy. You can change the thickness on it. Only problem with it is it doesn't really make it that solid. That's the problem with it. But But it does make it nonetheless. You get it going too thick and it starts acting really goofy. But for a quick and dirty like tower type thing, it's really not that thick. If you look at it. It's only a little bit but for what it is it kind of kind of works <laughs> but yeah that's kind of what that does <clears throat> cool one that I did one time what was the you can make like a blower fan type thing That's kind of what that reminds me of, but you have to sit in and like a squirrel cage fan. But you have to angle each one of those individually. It'd be kind of a pain to do. But yeah, if you click the replace original, it deletes the main part. But if you do that, it adds it onto it. So if you want to add like a feature on the edge of it.
Yeah, so it doesn't join them together, it just keeps them together. You'd have to do a boolean to get them to stick together. Anyway, that's just a quick overview of all of these. I didn't go over the mask, because I don't know the multi resolution, the skin, and well, I didn't go over the subdivision surface. Let me go over that one real quick. That's one that everybody usually starts playing out with to begin with because it's kind of fun. That one, all it does is it takes an object and splits it up into smaller sections. Like this is a cube and it changes it to that, but if you put a split down the middle, you can kind of manipulate it like that. And you can kind of do that, but what it does is basically it's a smoothing technique. Like if you add the Ecosphere and added subdivision surface, it smooths it out. Now, if you zoom in and look, it's smoothed out a lot different than it would be with a regular Ecosphere. If I made this not that many, so we can see it still six, about the same. If you look in the texture here, the smoothing is a lot different than it is with this. And I like this one better, to be honest. But this one, it still only has that shape with the, this on there. If you take that off, the eye makes it viewable or not. And this one, you can uh, subdivide smooth. The subdivide smooth does the same thing as the number of cuts over here, but the subdivide kind of does the same thing as that. Now I have a completely different texture. So that's similar to that one. If we subdivide it one more. Oh, that's right. If you just subdivided it, subdivided it down to smooth it. Smoothing makes it smoother. But either one of these, if you put it smooth, it'll make it look smoother. But especially like that one. But this one, because we did all those different things on it, it looks really goofy now. But that's pretty much it for all of the modifiers over here. I might get into some of these later on, but for now that's pretty much all I was going to do. And for the bonus, I'm going to show you the displacement map and what that does. So I'm just creating a, a plane and I'm going to actually subdivide it a whole bunch of times. That's probably enough, probably more than enough and add the displace modifier where'd it go? there it is <laughs> and at first it doesn't seem to do anything and the strength's usually at one but what you need to do is add a new image or movie you can add a picture environmental map you can use all these different textures like wood see how it's all super huge and everything what you need to do is go back to the modifier turn the strength way down like 0.15 something like that actually even smaller 0.015 oh, 0.04 
That looks good. But the uh, texture, you can change it to wherever you want it to. That's pretty cool. But it kind of just, <clears throat> excuse me, puts a texture on the object. And it just kind of makes it pretty cool. But the really cool thing is if you had a picture of some sort. Like, uh, where's that? Image or movie. Open something. Go to textures. Images. Like, take some of these bricks or something. That'll work. So you can kind of see it there, but it doesn't really look quite like the brick. So what we can do is actually use the subdivide surface modifier. And it looks better, but if we move that one, so we've got it twice. If we move that one ahead of the other one, this is where you can move these up or down. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> wow. It gets even more detailed. And that's so detailed that it's probably too thick if you had to smooth on there. Smooth it out, but the uh, 0 0.015. You basically get the image on there. So if we look at it, just shows that there's no texture on it. So if we add a texture, add a material, and there's that oh, brick texture. <laughs> image texture, open, go to textures, find that one again, is it this one, the other one, I think it's the same one anyway, add it to that, quite work. Oh, I know why. I need to UV unwrap it. There we go. However, it's the wrong size. I'm not used to UV unwrapping in the uh, cycles mode. That's where you need to go into the note editor and stuff like that. So, note editor. Zoom in, input, texture coordinates, UV, That's why it was looking weird. I don't know if you can hear my printer or not.
Yeah, anyway. Isn't the same. It's pretty close, but. Yeah, there we go. So when you zoom in, you get the same look at look on there. Anyway, this video is really long already, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop that from here. I just thought I'd show you the bonus footage of that. The lighting looks all strange because the uh, view that it's in this is reflecting the sky. That's better. It's just the uh, background map that I have. Anyway, but some people might like that. I don't know. It's kind of cool. Blender could do all kinds of stuff. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.